Your Royal Highness, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, Arab News welcomes you on this auspicious occasion of the 40th anniversary celebrations of our newspaper. Nobody could have imagined in 1975 that Arab News would become the nucleus of the largest media house in the Arab world, the Saudi Research and Marketing Group. The editorial approach of Arab News is to present different viewpoints on issues in the region and beyond. The focus is ensuring that cultural or ideological differences shouldn't mean dispute or hostility, that we are part as a group, as a human being, from this richly diverse world. And this is the policy we'd like to keep it in Arab News, that we are open to inside and outside, and we communicate, and we consider ourselves the bridge to bridge the gap between the East and the West. I believe we have only started to tap the enormous growth potential of this publication, and that with concerted effort, dedication, and creative ideas, we will achieve even greater, greater success. Telling it like it is. Thank you very much. Before you saw this film, you all heard from our editor-in-chief about the role that His Royal Highness Prince Turki al Faisal played while Arab news was still being conceptualized. It is under his patronage that tonight's celebrations are being held. He needs no introduction. As the former ambassador to the United States and the United Kingdom, and as chairman of the King Faisal Center for Research and Islamic Studies, Prince Turki al Faisal is the epitome of diplomacy and statesmanship. Ladies and gentlemen, may I request you to put your hands together to welcome His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Saud bin Abdul Mohsen to deliver His Royal Highness Prince Turki al Faisal's keynote address tonight. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is a pleasure to be here with you, and I am honored to be part of this celebration. And I am doubly honored to be delivering a speech on behalf of His Royal Highness Prince Turki al-Faisal, and in his own words. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ladies and gentlemen, first allow me to congratulate Arab News on 40 years of success. I pray to Allah that it will remain so for many years to come. Now, I refer to my address on the occasion of Arab News's 35th anniversary on the 15th of May 2010. On that occasion, I spoke about many issues facing us in the Middle East. On Palestine, I said that America should be the big bear, pushing us all to achieve the two-state solution with a viable Palestinian state, which has been President Obama's stated policy. He has articulated his position very eloquently. Now, we want him to be equally eloquent in implementing what he said. It is not enough to talk the talk, he has to walk the walk. If he does not succeed, and as President Truman so crassly calculated his electoral alternatives and decided to recognize Israel under Resolution 181 of 1947 of the General Assembly of the United Nations, then I ask President Obama to do the morally decent thing and recognize the Palestinian state that he so ardently wishes to exist under the same resolution of the General Assembly. He can then pack up and leave us in peace and let the Palestinians, Syrians, and Lebanese negotiate directly with the Israelis. No more platitudes, good wishes, and visions, please. <laughs> On Iraq, I said, sinister are the designs of some of Iraq's neighbors to take advantage of impending Iraqi internal conflict to advance their acquisition of Iraqi territories. We have already seen Iranian encroachment on Iraqi land at the beginning of the year. Imagine what will happen once internal strife and fighting escalates. Adding to the brutal mayhem taking place there, we watched a deliberate effort on the part of the then incumbent Prime Minister, Mr. Nouri al-Maliki, 
to hijack the results of their elections and deny the Iraqi people their legitimately elected government. As we have seen, the consequences of that was more bloodshed and potential civil war, and also a regional conflict on a scale not seen since the Ottoman Safavid Wars of the 17th and 18th centuries. Five years ago and still, the agony of Iraq continues. Fahish, which is wrongly named ISIS, although new to the scene, is the unquestionable direct offspring of Maliki's grab for power and Iran's continuous promotion of sectarianism wherever it lays its hands. Ladies and gentlemen, five years ago I also said that Afghanistan has a special place in my heart. I not only love the country and its people, but I also believe that it has not been given its due of peace and prosperity. What Afghanistan needs now is a shift from nation building to effectively countering terrorists. The point has been made that America and the rest of the world cannot accept that any country be the launching ground of terrorist activity as Afghanistan has been since 1997. The moral high ground which America acquired after September 11th has been eroded because of American negligence, ignorance and arrogance. I stated that as long as GI boots remain on Afghani soil, they remain targets of resistance for the Afghani people and ideological mercenaries. The attempts being made now are a step in the right direction. President Ashraf Ghani is starting with a clean slate. The Taliban of today are no longer the exclusively Pashtun warriors who ruled Afghanistan until 2002. They are now any and every Afghani of whatever ilk who raises arms against the foreign invaders. By declaring them the enemy, we declare the people of Afghanistan the enemy. Here also, there should be no more platitudes and good wishes. Pakistan, however, is and always was a more complex and inevitably more difficult country with which to deal. On its, northwestern front, on its northwestern frontier, it has the Durand Line, which has not been demarcated. On its northeastern border, it has Kashmir, which has been a festering wound since 1948. Until these issues are resolved, Pakistan will remain in a yo-yo-like swing from one to the other. Each border, by pulling on Pakistani resources, weakens the other border. Pakistan's support for the Afghani Taliban was and is based on an effort to secure her border with Afghanistan. So by fixing the Durand line, a heavy weight will be lifted off Pakistan's shoulders, and her increased sense of security will give her more confidence to deal with Kashmir. Regardless of the disappointing decision of the Pakistani parliament not to support decisive storm, Saudi Arabia will continue to support the Pakistani people, who are expressing their overwhelming support who are expressing their overwhelming support for the kingdom. Just look at the masses of ordinary Pakistanis marching in the streets of all Pakistani cities, carrying King Salman's portraits and shouting their unflinching stand by Saudi Arabia, and clear distinction to some mealy-mouthed politicians who have forgotten what the kingdom has done for Pakistan since its birth. In Iran, the nuclear issue is still pending, despite the agreement on the framework. The devil is in the details, which we will await. The kingdom's pref preferred and still viable option is the zone free of weapons of mass destruction, which will level the playing field. It will eliminate the clear danger of proliferation that the framework agreement does not. However, there are other missing ingredients from the agreement. Number one is a universal nuclear security umbrella for the countries in the area who legitimately feel threatened by nuclear and armed neighbors or future nuclear armed neighbors. Number two is a good military option to threaten anyone who refuses to cooperate in removing the threat of nuclear weapons from the area. For this to be effective, the military option and the nuclear security umbrella have to be jointly agreed to by the five permanent members of the Security Council, as well as economic and technical aid programs for the countries that join the zone. We need state for straightforward statesmanship. I hope that President Obama, who has made universal disarmament his goal and took the unprecedented step of revealing the numbers of nuclear warheads in the American arsenal as a measure of transparency and truthfulness, will find the way to make our area free of weapons of mass destruction. No loftier or nobler goal could be pursued. Additionally, Iran's continued interference in Arab affairs is unacceptable. As we are dealing with Yemen, Iran's imperial ambitions, as expressed by Mr. Ali Yunusi, will be checked in Lebanon, Syria, and Iraq. In conclusion, our nations and peoples are experiencing a period of chaotic and harmful interventions and changes. We, as Arab and Muslim nations, must become more self-reliant, 
and proactive to secure our borders and pursue our interests. For God helps those who help themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Royal Highness, for that eloquent uh, address. As a token of our appreciation and gratitude, we now request our Editor-in-Chief, Mr. Muhammad al harthi to honor His Royal Highness, Prince Faisal bin Saud bin Abdul Mahusin, by presenting him with a specially made portrait of Prince Turki al Faisal with his father, the late King Faisal. This was especially done by Arab news cartoonist Mr. Mirdad Dekheri. <laughs> 